Police close off Las Vegas Boulevard as Tupac Shakur is rushed to the hospital. Violence, as American as apple pie. Police say it was a large gun that was used due to the size of the bullet holes. Hip hop reflects that. It's like a beef between the East and the West Coast. You know, when, when, when Pac died, I just couldn't believe it because I thought Pac was Superman. He sold about 20 million albums, one of the defining artists of hardcore gangster rap. We're still reeling from Tupac's death. Notorious Big, B-I-G, a notorious rap singer, uh, was shot and killed. I said, stop playing. Stop playing. I guess that's the reality of our society nowadays. I mean, we live in the street and we die in the street. It's getting too violent. It's supposed to be singing about it, not supposed to be, you know, it shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be like that. It all felt very familiar, even though, you know, I didn't know Big. It felt like I knew him. And, and when he passed, it was just the sadness, you know what I'm saying? I definitely, like, shed a tear. Biggie Smalls from bed -Star. I'm from bed -Star. you know what I'm saying? We gonna keep it real, we gonna represent for Biggie Smalls. The deaths of Big and Tupac were the first prominent gun violence deaths in hip hop. Hip hop does not exist in a vacuum. There's all of this context. It's a part of this larger American culture and landscape. You know, rappers were just describing things that we see in every day on the way to school. And the violence in, in, in the music was just a reflection of, of what we saw. I remember back in the day, I think it was Chuck D who said, Hip hop is like the black CNN. It's reflecting what is going on. It's a Morse code. It's a way to disseminate information. And, and you know, the more people scrutinize it, the more it made, made us hold on to it tighter. I think it's really interesting with these younger rappers specifically, usually before they hit the age of 30, they've made pioneering influences in hip hop take off from Migos, PMB Rock. They pass so quickly, the shock value of that affects the human psyche. You have people who are entering the music industry directly from the street corner or the trap house. You don't have that in country music. You don't have that typically in R&B. You don't have that in rock. Nipsey Hussle wasn't the first one. It, 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 you know, Pop Smoke wasn't the first one. Like again, as happens every day in our neighborhoods. You know, what I'm saying to, to countless just nameless young men and, and young women. So it's not a hip hop problem. And this is why I say it's a larger systemic issue, right? We have to address these issues uh, that lead to criminality. Poverty, lack of proper, you know, mental and physical health care, housing. If we ignore more systemic issues, then we cannot get to the root of how gun violence has become so prevalent in certain communities. Um, how we have nearly one rapper every year since 2018 dying of gun violence. There are root issues that I think need to be discussed. From a grieving standpoint, a mother never gets over losing a child, like ever, no matter how long. I think the longer it goes, the worse it gets. I thought I had a handle on it. I think for something like this, it's forever. Producer Scott LaRock died after being struck by a bullet. Charisma shot dead. Randy Stretch Walker was shot and Rapper killed. Rapper Seagram Miller was killed after being shot in Oakland. Rapper Tupac Shakur succumbed to his injuries the notorious after being B.I.G. Shot. shot and killed in a drive-by shooting. At the Meadows Big Southwest Al died Department from his injuries after Jam being Master shot. Jam Master J of Run Soldier DMC Slim was died killed. Soldier died after being Mac shot. Mac is dead after Rapper being shot by an died after being shot. Shot. was XXX 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 shot in Oakland. Pop Smoke has died after being shot. gunned down in broad daylight. Chicago Rapper King Von Young Dolph was killed. has been shot dead, dead in Canarsie after being P shot. And Rock gunfire shot erupted, killed. killing rapper Takeoff, a member of the ground. Audrey Jackson's photo album holds some of her last personal memories with her son before he died, a victim of gun violence. Bashar Jackson is my son. My son was loving. My son was challenging. My son was a seeker. Pop Smoke, 
son of Audrey and Greg Jackson and Brooklyn Zone, was known to the world as the voice behind platinum selling hits like Welcome to the Party. Baby, welcome to the party. Uh, I hit the boy up and then I go skate. And the viral track Dior. Uh, Christian Dior, Dior. Many praised him as the next big hip hop star, the artist who would bring New York rap back to the forefront. But he'd never see 11 of his songs go platinum or accept his five Billboard Awards. I don't know that they're better days. I just think they're just days, you know. Maybe the better days in something like that is the day when I feel it, but it's not a loss, it's just a remembering. Can you tell me just what the name even Pop Smoke means to you? <laughs> uh, Pop Smoke. That's a persona that he created for one of the phases of his life's work. That persona was always supposed to live, but that wasn't going to be the be all and end all of who he came here to be. Mm. So Pop Smoke is the artist, you know, the sweet talk of the charmer. <laughs> Sometimes I can't be Pop Smoke's mom. I'll always be Bashar's mommy. Pop Smoke, sometimes I have to kind of sit back. Because she requires a different kind of strength. I appreciate her because she's getting Shar's mom through it. Then I got a phone call. And everything changed. Rapper Pop Smoke has died. Multiple suspects broke into a Hollywood Hills home this morning and shot the rapper. It's a call Audrey will never forget. The voice on the other line, Shiv, an A&R rep from Pop Smoke's label. You get a phone call. Can you walk me through it? I think Shiv said he's been shot, but he's okay. I just know people kept coming to the house, and even, even, even when folks kept coming, I was like, but he's okay, why are you all here? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and then when Shiv came, he said that he was gone. And I was like, oh. It didn't really sink in. Um, and as I was moving through it, it still wasn't like, I didn't, it didn't hit until I actually saw his body, which was a few days in. I mean, intellectually, I understood. Mm -hmm. And that kind of still is where I am. You know, um, intellectually, I understand it. The rest of me uh, hasn't. On February 19th, 2020, Pop Smoke died at just 20 years old. That same week, his mixtape, Meet the Woo Volume 2, debuted at number seven on the Billboard 200 chart. Four suspects, including two minors, were charged with murder. I was never angry at that 14-year-old or the 17 and 16-year-old. I was never angry at them. Can't hate that little boy. Why not? Because his mom didn't raise him to go kill Pop Smoke. She was probably a mother having issues trying to raise a 14-year-old boy wherever it is they, and just not being able to do it. So you see even parallels. You're raising your son in Brooklyn, New York. This mother who's raising a son in Los Angeles, you even see parallels. You'll raise your children to be the best that you understand. He kept saying, Mom, I'm working. I have a surprise for you. And you're going to see, I'm, I'm going to make you proud, Mom. He was so attached to me. We were so close. This is my favorite one. This was Christmas pictures. Him and his brother, we took that. And this one, he loves Scooby-Doo. So this was a Halloween picture right here. When Pop Smoke died, I decided, I said, we can't live here no more, we have to move. I started to get like a little scared, you know? And it was just like jealousy. That's the most thing I was thinking about, and that's exactly what took place. An up-and-coming rapper and dancer was shot outside his Brooklyn home. I saw him, and 
they were trying their best. But I know the angle where he got shot, I know he wouldn't survive. Did you ever find out what the surprise was? It was the deal, the record deal he wanted to tell me about. 22-year-old Tajay Dobson was killed Tuesday in Canarsie. It happened hours after he signed a contract with Million Dollar Music under the stage name T. Wu. Nearly two years after Pop Smoke's death, T. Wu was shot outside his childhood home in Canarsie, Brooklyn. Before they were up-and-coming hip-hop stars, they were just two boys from the neighborhood. There is prevalent gun violence throughout different neighborhoods in Brooklyn, specifically Canarsie. Pop Smoke was from Canarsie. T Dot was from Canarsie. Canarsie has a heavy, heavy population of gangs in New York and a prevalent issue with gun violence. Bonded by tragedy, Audrey and Zodia are now leaning on each other, moving forward together in their grief. When you guys first met and you first talked, what was that conversation like? She was really just in the midst of me. Grief. grief. And you know, I always say to her, let me just stop saying it. I thought I wish I could grieve the way she grieves. Actually, more. Her outward. Yeah. Right. Because she you knows she just lets it go. I'm like, mm mm, we're not doing that. Yeah. More like mm. keep it together. Right, because you see, I'm the kind of chick that would probably be in the middle of the street wailing if I let her go. Yeah. So, I, I, need to, I need to retain her. I also think it's harder for people to conceptualize the idea of rappers having families and friends and people who cared about them. And when someone dies, the people who have to deal with that might no longer have a breadwinner in the family, might no longer have a son, a daughter, a cousin, a nephew, a member of their family. It was so hard. I had family and friends around me. I couldn't do nothing. A double XL magazine investigation found that since the deaths of Tupac and Biggie, more than 90 rappers have died from gun violence. Many of their cases remain unsolved. This is America. This is not hip hop, right? And that cannot continue to be the thing that we point the finger to. We need to have systemic change to change the communities that people are living in. And that is when we will see change in hip hop culture itself. He was living his life as he should. And I'm not saying he was an innocent. I don't know everything, and I don't need to know everything. Um, but he wasn't that kid. Other rappers that have been shot and killed, when you hear that news, does it bring you back? Mm -hmm. Always bring me back, back to the day when it happened. Always. It's painful, it's annoying, it's sad. Especially if they're the young men that, like, the, I, you know, that I've met, and you're looking forward to the next conversation because they hold a story, you know, of my son, and so now they're gone. And when is it going to stop? Next on Tone Death, loss in hip hop. Our neighborhoods are like war zones in America. They're selected strategic elements of rap and hip hop, which are about as pro-peace and anti-violence as any other aspect of this society. The last two albums you had, PTSD, Survivor's Remorse, these are terms that we associate with people coming back from war. Yeah. How can you explain to people that these are terms that you resonate with? Chicago is such a, a dark place at times. It's one of the most beautiful cities in the world, but it's like people are afraid to come here because of, you know, what they see on TV or what they watch on the news. And I feel like it can all be changed. I feel like everybody want to change. Our neighborhoods are like war zones. Artists like G Herbo and the late Pop Smoke talking about the trauma that they faced from these environments from the communities they're from. The industry doesn't shape them, doesn't protect them, right? So whatever they come in with is what they have to use to survive. You know, to see our mother lose their 
child at such a young age, again, it's hurtful and painful. I want people to, like, understand why I make this kind of music or who I am as a person. G. Herbo's raw lyrics and haunting melodies tell a story of trauma and loss that many experience in Chicago, a city with 637 deadly shootings just last year. Those circumstances spawned the birth of drill music known for its grit and intensity. I never really considered myself a drill rapper to begin with. I always considered myself an artist, like a real hip hop artist. And I grew up listening to hip hop, but I came out in a drill wave. That's why people said I rapped off beat, like when I first started doing music, because I was on these drill beats, but I was rapping like hip hop. You know, I would slow down and really like, I grew up listening to like Jada Kids, Jay Z, Lil Wayne, you know, people who really rap music. What was Chicago like growing up? I didn't really get to enjoy my childhood in a sense, you know, because just the environment I was in, like gang culture and violence and stuff, experiencing that early on, it traumatized me. But it was just so normal. I was like 10, 11 years old. I was having sex and exposed to like gang banging and exposed to drugs and all of this stuff. And my mom and dad always told me that you have to fend for yourself. I'm not going to be there with you, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, with a song like Outside Looking In, I just want people to, like, see all of the things that I was exposed to, and it didn't turn him into a monster. A good kid raised in a world so tragic, charm of his mama and the heart of his daddy. The average person listening to a song would just think I'm talking about, like, just somebody in poverty, or they might be like, oh, damn, I went through this too. When did he start being open about some of the things that you were talking about therapy and putting it into your music. When I started like getting comfortable with therapy, I was working on my album PTSD and I feel like that was one of my most vulnerable albums that I ever put out. What would you say to someone who says that hip hop promotes violence and gang activity, for example? I'll say no, it doesn't because there's selected strategic elements of rap and hip hop which are about as pro-peace and anti-violence as any other aspect of this society. So rap reflects the realities that the young people live through and that they're exposed to. Dr. Jaleel abdul Adil is an associate professor of clinical psychology at the University of Illinois at Chicago. He uses music therapy in his practice to help kids in surrounding neighborhoods deal with trauma, using artists like G Herbo to help his patients heal. The first thing we do is find out, do they like hip hop? And if you do, what types of hip hop do you like? And so we do needs assessment of the artists who move them. We also ask them, which artists don't you like and why? The next thing we do is say, well, what do you like about those artists and not only how they behave and the, the images you see, but what about their stories? What about their lyrics? And once we find out what you like, then we link it to other artists, particularly those strategically selected pro-social artists that we can say, hey, listen to this. Hey, have you heard about this artist? And hey, let's watch this video. And then we start saying, well, out of what you've seen and heard, what do you think you might do? How'd you hear about Jerba? As part of my research on drill rap in Chicago, as you know, is a very particular type mm -hmm. of so-called gangster rap. And I was impressed by the fact that he's able to connect some of the negative experiences to the mental health conditions. To be completely honest, music was the first form of therapy for me. For us as fans, we hear the headlines when a rapper dies, when we hear people that we listen to and we love. But if you know that person, what is it like for you? It's completely different. By the time I was 16 years old, I was numb. Like, I, I wouldn't cry when people died. And, you know, a lot of my friends, I would go to the funeral and just go and just look at them in the casket, and I didn't feel nothing, you know, like, and, I know that turned me into a different person and I had to like regain my feelings, you know. You said you were diagnosed with PTSD. Yeah. How does that manifest for you? Like a lot of times I can't sleep at night. I still cry, I still grieve behind a lot of people that I lost and I know a lot of people are way worse than I am. I made a lot of mistakes, you know. Um, I did a lot of things growing up and I experienced a lot of things, a lot of trauma, but I don't make that an excuse, I just say, you know, it, that's what it is to, to help people because I'm not the only person that go through this.
just knowing that someone from Chicago is actually doing something like this is great is just like I felt like I could relate to him like so many ways, you know. So I just felt like super, like super happy, you know. Allowing yourself to become vulnerable and have to talk about the hard things. And so talk about the the relationship between your music and, and trauma. My trauma and my music always went hand in hand because I'm not afraid to be myself. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm a I'm a emotional person, you know. I'm a human being just like everybody else. I almost passed out. <laughs> like, my, I had fell back, my chair fell, everything. It was like a big moment for me because he is such an inspiration to me. I really relate to him because, like, I do have PTSD because I went through a very traumatic event. You can't expect a kid, an innocent child, who's up against so much negativity that don't have support, that don't have the resources, that don't feel the love to want to, you know, wake up and go, that wake up with hate in their heart or negativity or doubt or malice or anything because they're just fed negativity and it's, they're fed violence and they're fed hatred and all of that. So you have to, you have to help them heal. And nine times out of 10, when it's so much hate, it's really love. It's they want to feel love. They want to be loved. They want to love somebody. One more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go. I love my city. I love children. I want to see children grow up. I want them to have that innocence. You know, I have three kids, and I want, like, kids are supposed to be innocent and pure. Do you see yourself in them? Yes, 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 absolutely. And that's why I talk to them the way I do. And I've experienced all these things, and I'm successful, so you could do it too. I mean, even just the last two albums you had, PTSD, Survivor's Remorse, mm -hmm. these are terms that we associate with people coming back from war. Yeah. How can you explain to people that these are terms that you resonate with? What I mean by that is, like, with having Survivor's Remorse, I'm successful, you know, so I don't want to, like, just look happy all the time. You know, I have friends that didn't even see 18, see their 18th birthday, you know, and my younger brother, he didn't see his 25th birthday. He died uh, seven days before his 25th birthday. It was it's the hardest time I've ever been through in my life. I went into depression. I fell into, like, alcoholism. I shut down everyone that was close to me, like my mom and my girl. I, I really just literally became a different person. Sometimes I just go riding around in my car just to like cry and stuff like that. But although I'm, I believe in, you know, being vulnerable and opening up about my situation, I just felt like it was no one that I could talk to that, that understood my pain and what I was going through. In a partnership with the city, G Herbo is working to build a multimedia facility by repurposing the grounds of an abandoned school, an old space with a new outlook that could once again become a safe haven for children looking for a sense of community. We're in the historic neighborhood of Bronzeville. Bronzeville was the neighborhood that 100 years ago during the Great Migration when African Americans were seeking a better life coming from the South. This was the only neighborhood where they could live. This is, yeah, the, the Machine 150 multimedia facility where, you know, we're just going to be teaching the kids trades, engineering, Pretty much everything, you know, so we're gonna um, invest like a, a ton of money in it, of course, but. Um, so not just and, music? Yeah, no. not just music. It's a support system, but not only is it for artists per se like Herb, it's for kids who may want to do the ancillary stuff like engineering, videographer, yeah. photography. For these kids to, to have this opportunity the knowledge they're going to have and just to be creative is going to be like limitless opportunities for them, you know, to have somewhere to call home where they can get up and say, oh, I'm going to go here and work on my craft, or they can get up and pick up the phone and they can call somebody like Guion or JB or even myself. I give a lot of these students my actual number. When I went to a community center, it was somewhere to just go and feel love and feel unity and just go be a part of something. A lot of times people want to be a part of something. That's why they join gangs, you know, so a lot of these kids won't have to join a game because they'll be over here with us. It's OK to help others. And it's OK to ask people to change to be part of the change. Let's do something different, and we can still do those things different together. The fact that these artists are talking about mental health and naming, I'm experiencing trauma. I'm experiencing PTSD. They're acknowledging that there's something going on and that there's a need. I think that's a really important step. And I think it really is going to come down to 
community work. He was still a kid. He was still growing. He was still learning. He was still questioning. You know, he was still seeking. I feel a peace of mind when I'm here at the house. I mean, sometimes I would come and I would look across the street and, you know, I, I talk, talk to him. You know, when I come in here, I feel like his presence is still here. You know, I feel deeply for the mothers, for the families, the communities, the neighborhoods, the children who are losing their, their loved ones. All lives do not matter equally in this context where we're seeing these disproportionate rates of violence. And we have to be honest about that. And if nothing else, hip hop music is going to help us be honest about that. Go, go, go! Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.